because once the caduceus rod activates, which is the artificial rod that goes through the equatorial poles, um, you can't stop it. If you stopped it, it would actually it would actually make the the, the core crystal in in the Earth implode, and it would blow up. And if we blew up, the aurora field would protect Eartha pretty much, but with the spanner gates open, Eartha would get damaged too, and it probably wouldn't make its own star fire. So, yeah. But with the caduce, so the, it, it, stopping it is not an option. Our guys didn't activate it, but at least it was handed over to them so by the Green Dragon groups, the F.A. Green Dragon groups, because they knew they were going to lose it to the Reds, because the Reds actually are more powerful than they are on as far as the force on the planet. And we're, you know, our beloveds are securing it as much as they can and sheathing it and trying to make it go as slow as possible, which will make it, it's supposed to progressively accelerate spin, and it was meant to roll us into the hibernation zones. What it would do now is roll the hibernation zones into us, which would probably be just as catastrophic in different ways, where our, our land mass might stay stable, but it's not going to be fun to have a lot of those people coming here because they need to evac someplace and we're the closest, right? So slowing down the spin of the caduceus rod will buy time as far as it, you know, it's going to do something at some point because it can't be shut down. So they're hoping, I don't imagine they're going to be able to slow it for 223 years, but you never know. <laughs> that would be good, because then at that point, you know, let it go and whatever, because we, they've evacuated what life field they can from here. But we, I, I can tell that we're being prepared for a fast slide if necessary. And I've asked them, I said, are, are the you know, FAs up to something again? You know, are they, are they doing a whammy on the planet again? And they said, not anything more than usual. You know, the usual nonsense, um, which is they always try to escalate it, and our guys always have to do something to try to counterbalance that, and it's like, whatever. But what they're concerned about is uh, the potentiality of, of more rapid than would be convenient for the people who live here, Earth changes. We're already seeing an increase in everything from, you know, wacky weather, you know, hurricane stuff and earthquakes especially. When we were in um, Peru in May, we were given, uh, we, we didn't even know we got it until we got back actually. Um, the day that we arrived, I think we arrived the day before the main group in Lima, that day, we arrived in the evening, the plane came in the evening, that day there had been this news thing that um, there was mass UFO sightings over Lima and also over, I believe, Mexico City and somewhere in Chile. And they were on like three different countries, you know, Spanish-speaking news stations. It was that big of a story. We didn't find out until we got back from the whole Peru trip, which was wacky in its own right. It was good, but it was just like dodging bullets as far as uh, the FAS go. When we got back, somebody had sent us that, you know, look what happened while you were there. And it was literally the same day that we'd come in. And they're, they're big flybys where they're, they were caught on film, they were on, you know, TV, that kind of stuff. It was broad daylight, and there were, like, fleets of orb-type things hanging in the sky over metropolitan areas. And I, I asked the beloved, I said, are they connected to us? I said, they're not ours, but they came on our behalf. I said, what does that mean? Is that a warning? Because it was right in Voyagers. They said in the event that Earth changes were imminent in an area, they would do flybys in the area to give warning. And that was published back in 2000. And they, uh, this is the first one. There's been flybys of other sorts. There's always something going on in UFO land. But they, this is the first one that they actually claimed. They said, yes, it was that. It, it was a warning. There are going to be, you know, some degree of earth changes there. We don't know what degree. We don't know exactly when. But, yes, that is a warning, and there will be others when those situations arise. I think it was exactly 55 days until the Peru earthquake happened, that eight, I think it was a point, uh, an eight on the Richter scale. So I mean, I'm still kind of going, well, Mexico City is still all right, and Chile hasn't done anything weird yet. What they're mainly concerned about is there are a set of underground um, connections between the San Andreas faults and the uh, ones that run down in through South America, particularly ones connected to um, the volcano that I call Popo because I can't pronounce the big word, right? <laughs> Unless I'm looking at it and I phonetically sound it out and it still doesn't look, sound like it looks. But the, the one in, uh, in, in Mexico, I think it's Mexico City, isn't it? It's right, Mexico City. That's the one they've been worried about for a long time because that's directly connected to a bunch of stuff that 
scientists don't realize it's connected to yet. If that goes, there's a set of chain reactions that will happen that will take out all sorts of things and they will actually work their way up the chain and there's a good chance of them really devastating California and setting off and going upward and setting off that, I forget what they call it, it's not called a volcano, but it is a volcano, but it's like an underground thing that domes, but it doesn't come to a peak. I forget what they're called. That's it, caldera. Yeah. <laughs> There's one up in the Yellowstone Park area, I believe, that is quite huge. Is it? Yeah. That if that chain happens, that will go. And, and if that goes, well, it, I think we'll probably be watching from up there at that point because it won't be pretty. So there is a chance that wacky things could happen quickly. It may, nothing may happen. But if it does, in that particular set of them go, you know, from South America coming up through into North America, it, it could set in motion cataclysms like we have never seen here, you know, in our lifetime. So they're, they're trying to prepare us gently. And being prepared is better than not being prepared. You know, it might be a scary thought to think about it, but they're not saying, like, head for the hills. What hills do you head for when your planet's starting to shake and quake? I mean, you know, head for the sky, perhaps. I mean, yes, yes, right up to slide three. Yeah, so they're 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 making sure that we're ready, and with our shield activating to progressively higher levels fast like this, it will also give the angelic human populations a chance because it will trigger more rapid activation in their shields. The fact that they've actually opened the uh, Allurian passages or the the uh, hollow records um, means something because that will trigger very rapid DNA awakening just across the board whatever's in your DNA it's going to start to wake up uh oh <laughs> oh dear <clears throat> I don't know what that might mean for some populations on the planet you know, we may, they may end up with their hibernation zone people walking around with them in their bodies I don't know but it, for, they're, they're, they must be concerned about the earth change potential if they're going that far and, and opening the hall of records in order to it'll do two things one it will it's the best way to attempt to stabilize the planetary grids as long as there's somebody here to run it and that's what we did by anchoring that the, those frequencies coming in if they just blasted them in there's no aparthy to receive all of those billions of frequency dots that come in and it just it would it would cause earthquakes like as soon as it hit actually the, the syrian pillar when it came in it would have it would have started shaking right there and we would have had like a tsunami here very quickly and all those kind of things but because the aquifarian shield is here and in you know it, it's kind of funny because there are different people every every workshop not all the same people come to the same workshops but there's enough people that come that have the Aquarii line codes that were able to do really large things now. And this was a massive, I mean, if, as far as how many ohms this thing had, these pillars are massive electrical beings. And there's not even like a storm brewing out there so far. <laughs> yeah.